what have we here? Please, sir, I seem to have lost my way. Ah, uh, well, there's no shame in that, ma'am. That's a, that's a weakness in us all. I'd be grateful if you could direct me to Portsmouth Street. Portsmouth Street? Ah, uh, yes. Then you know the way. Ah, uh, no, but I'm willing to accept the challenge. Richard Swiveller, ma'am, at your service. And I am Nell Trent. Well, Nell Trent, aren't you frightened being by yourself so late at night? Oh, no, sir. When you walk the road with love, you never walk alone. And when I'm lost, I always make a friend. I laugh when people ask me, aren't you frightened? Aren't you scared? I say yes because I don't like to offend them. I may be simple hearted, but I think the world is grand. And I wear my heart quite proudly on my sleeve. Oh dear, I sound precocious, but I hope you understand. And may I add, I've always had my own philosophy. Get out of the way! When you're in a pickle and your world is upside down A big old frown hangs round the sun all day You try to wear a grin to lift your chin But everything around you looks so grey But Mr Swiveller, you can count on people If they can count on you Glue your face on people and it sticks and when I'm in a dither, I give me time to say, don't get in a flither, or a pucker, or a hum, or a fix. Take a little dab, or poke, add a lucky bag of beans. Sprinkle some love into a shovel full of dreams. Mix them all together in a song and you see why. Life can be a recipe for happiness pie. Ingredients for happiness pie. Uh, I'm tired. Uh, a gentleman of substance who is down upon his luck, poverty struck and stuck for shoe repairs, his future's most unsure, his credit's poor. And now the bailiff's lurking on the stair. Oh, my sweet young lady, he can count on no one except his thumbs and toes. No time to mourn, he simply pawns his watch. And when I face a staggerer, the face I face tells me, Don't get in at his was or a boggle, or a bungle, or a bunch. Boggle, or a bungle, or a bunch. Got to watch your pockets at the docks. Take a pocketful of gold and a bellyful of wine. Give me the freehold on some lovely diamond mine. And as my name is Richard Swiveller, I will kiss my cares goodbye. That would be my recipe for happiness pie. Well, I'm told and gold pie. Would be my recipe for happiness pie. Now, tell me, who would allow you out by yourself so late at night? Someone who loves me very much, sir. And why? It's a secret, one that I don't even know myself. Damn me, sir! You've got the manners of a bedlamite. If you have doubt in people, they're bound to doubt themselves. You have to trust to get trust in return. When you wear rosy glasses, the world looks rosy too. You're too optimistic. I'm a cynic. I'm a braggart. You can learn. Uh, Take a little dab. Of wine. And lucky bag. Of gold. Sprinkle some love. I'll sprinkle cash if you don't mind. Mix, Mix it all together, together in a song and you'll see why. Life can be a recipe. If only fate would cook for me a happiness pie. Mix it all together in a song and you'll see why. Life can be 
a recipe. Your recipe is not for me. The world is good and life is sweet. It is if there's enough to eat. Just bank on people all the time. I wish that bank account was mine. If you have love, you'll trouble see. I'll drink to that and I have a piece of that. that elusive cake up in the sky. Good happy. Happiness pie. Happiness pie. Oh, my dear young lady. At last. <laughs> My dear child, I was half crazed with worry. I lost my way, Grandfather. This gentleman was kind enough to escort me home. Richard Swiveller, your humble servant, sir. <laughs> come in, sir. Do come in. Mr. Swiveller, <coughs> this is really most kind of you. How can I ever thank you for coming to Nell's rescue? By taking better care of her another time, sir. <laughs> now, no, you, you judge me wrongly, sir. No man ever loved his grandchild as I love Nell. I tell you she was lost, Mr. Trent. A child of her years should not be sent on errands so late at night. The streets are plagued with rogues and cutthroats. The children of the poor must take such risks, <laughs> Mr. Swiveller. But, forgive me for saying this, Surely you are not so very poor. Oh, this. <laughs> this is nothing but the security that I retain for Nell's future. I save nothing, not a penny, not a farthing. But mark me, sir. The time is coming when she shall be rich. One day Nell shall have no pittance but a fortune. Ah, here's Kit come back. Oh, evening, Miss Nell. Evening, Master. <coughs> evening, sir. Uh, uh, Mr. Swiveller. Uh, ah, it grows late. I, uh, uh, I, I, I should be on my way. I'm in your debt, sir, and so is Nell. It's my pleasure. You're surely not going out at such a late hour. I have important business to attend to. I do thank you, sir. I hope you'll call on us again. We'll meet again, I'm sure. Sleep soundly in hell. Early in the morning, I shall be home. I don't know anyone my own size, you dog. You see, if I stick up for you next time someone says you're an ugly old freak. You mean I'm not, you thieving mongrel? No, not because you ain't, but because Kit Nubbles says so. <laughs> uh, dear Kit. <laughs> honest Kit. Almost too honest to live unless he's careful of himself. Honest Kit said that, did he? <laughs> Little Nell's faithful dog. <laughs> well, here's something for you, Kit, for telling the truth. <laughs> Ask anyone who knows me, and they'll tell you I'm as friendly as a boa constrictor sleeping off his lunch. <laughs> Do I raise my hand to every child that calls me Hachi Monster as I have the bailiff drag him off to jail? <laughs> Never! Do I shout and rage at every mangy dog that tries to bite me when I try to tie a tin can? to his tail. <laughs> <laughs> 
Not likely. And do I burn with anger every time some woman faints as I stoop to give her stupid hand a kiss? Rubbish. Or seek male satisfaction from each yahoo on the block who owes me three weeks' rent and gives me this? He wouldn't dream of it. I'm as gentle as a fall of summer rain. And my kindness would put Santa Claus to shame. I'm Quilp, Quilp. You can call me Daniel, scruffier than a spaniel, slippery as an eel, the real McQuilp of fame, as cunning as a weasel. Well. Every little breeze whisper my name, hear him my home from home by the rat-infested river. I deliver smuggled wares, have a hot Havana. Here I dine alone on a load of rum and kippers, cheating on myself at solitaire. King of hearts is Mr. Dan. Dan! Quilpish to the backbone, stab you in the backbone, stinkier than a skunk, the smallest hunk of crime since Borgia did her grooming. And though to err is human, to quilp is divine. So if by some odd fluke you're looking for a villain, stoop a little lower and you're looking at a real and I'm dirty damn. The bottom of the barrel, if it's nasty and immoral, it's quilp. C'est moi, le quilp. Napoleon of scoundrels, why don't you stick around? You love all of my burglar friends. Stupenda quilp, the louse, as artful as a jaybird. Just a bird, a prey bird, waiting to pounce. I'm just a no-count skunk who has sunk as low as one can. I'm a one-man plague of bats. When I sold my soul to the devil Monday morning, by Tuesday he was trying to give it back. He's a friend of mine. <laughs> Hurrah! Hurrah! For Quilp! For Quilp! Quilp the first of England! Quilp the curse of England, slimier than a toad. The road to Quilp is strewn with horrible intentions. Weirdos without pensions hurled from their rooms. And if the law comes round and I think they got my number, I'll look them in the eye and say, as quilp as a cucumber, how do you do? I'm very pleased to meet you. I'm that fascinating creature called quilp. I'm Quilp, Quilp, you can call me master. Blimey, what a bastard. What a delightful youth, a bit uncouth. Although a boy is just a pagan, says my old friend Fagan, and he ought to know. Although his wife's at home, he disowns her for the ladies. In the country after dark. And we have such fun picking fully poison ivy. He's really just a pussycat at heart. Step aside for Mr. Quill. What ho! Although it doesn't look it, I'm so blinking crooked, I have to screw on my socks. A pox on those who say the wages of sin are lonely. They're the only wages that always get paid. And you won't get none of the money under my roof. You can't take it with you, cos you'll never get it fireproofed. You yelping dog, I'll cut my name on you! Well, no, get, get off! It's Nell. Nell. Look, Tom, you lovely little creature. Ha, <laughs> ha,
my dear sweet Nellie. To what do we owe the honour of this visit? Out, dog. I have brought you a letter, Master Quilp, from my grandfather. Uh, do you know what's in this letter, child? No, sir. Are you sure, upon your soul? Would you wish to die if you did, huh? <laughs> my dear Quilp. More money? What the devil has he done with it all? That's the mystery. He owes me a fortune already, that, that grandfather of yours. I must have an answer, Mr Quilp. But you haven't it, Nellie, and you won't have it, and you can't have it. Then I must go, sir. Nellie. You're looking very pretty today, Nellie. How would you like to be my number two? Huh? To be what, sir? <laughs> to be Mrs. Quilp the second? When Mrs. Quilp the first is dead? <laughs> be a good girl, Nellie, and one day you could be mistress of Tower Hill. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Mr. Quilp. Have no fears. Quilp's health is better than ever. Ill weeds are sure to thrive. No woman need take what you take, Betsy Quilp. Before I'd let a man order me round as Quilp orders her, I'd kill myself and write a letter first to say he did it. Mm. When my poor husband, your dear father, was alive, if he'd ever dared venture a crossword to me, I'd have... It's all very fine to talk, Mother. But if I were to die tomorrow, Quilp could marry anybody he pleased. What? Marry any woman? Yes. I'd sooner stab myself than marry a tyrant like Quilp. <laughs> uh, go on, ladies, go on. Mrs Quilp, pray ask the ladies to stop for supper. And we'll have a couple of lobsters or something light and palatable. I didn't invite them in, Quilp. It was an accident. Accidental parties are always the most pleasant, my dear. Not going, ladies, surely. Oh. <laughs> You should imitate your mother more, my dear. She's an ornament to her sex. <laughs> so your father said every day of his life. Her father was a blessed creature, Quilp, and worth 20,000 of some people. I dare say he was a blessed creature then, madam. I'm sure he is now. It was a happy release. I believe he had suffered a long time. Oh, you nice creature. My little wife. Such a jewel. A diamond. A pearl. A ruby. I'm very fond of you, my dear. Am I not charming to look upon, Mrs. Quilp? Oh, yes, Quilp. Yes. Should I not be the handsomest creature in the world, had I but whiskers? Then you can thank your fortunate stars, madam, those same stars that made you, Mrs. Quilp, that this time I will forgive you! But if I ever catch you gossiping with those old hags again, madam, I shall bite you. <laughs> Two whole days. And still no word from Quilp. Tell me again, child, what did he say to you? Tell me nothing, Grandfather. He only wanted to know what you had done with the last money he gave you. If he deserts me now, I'm ruined. Be patient, Grandfather. I will not allow Quilp to rob me of my investments. And what, may I ask, are those investments? Ah, my dear Mr Quilp. What a pleasant surprise. What have you done with my gold, Trent? Good morning, all. I hope I see you well. Mr. Quilp, <laughs> this is a friend of ours. Richard Swiveller, sir. A gentleman of good family and soon to inherit great wealth. 
Oh, my dear sir, what an honour and a privilege. At the moment, in need of a situation... Uh, well, let's not uh, be <coughs> too hasty. Would you allow me to whisper half a syllable, oh. sir? I, I would like to raise a few quid on this watch. <laughs> Excuse Please. me, we're very busy. Mr Quilp, have you brought me any money? No. What are these investments of yours, neighbour? You know, I can't discuss it, Mr Quilp. Hmm. Don't forget I hold every security you possess. I have no money. Then a legal paper assigning me shares in this new venture of yours. <laughs> Send Nelly over to my house with it. I... The money! Or the letter. By tomorrow. Mr Quilp! And that's final! It is the genuine article, sir. Real gold. It was given to me by an aunt of mine in Dorsetshire. She was going to die when I was eight years old, but uh, has positively refused to keep her promise. Mm -hmm. How inconsiderate of her. Uh, have you ever had any training in the law? <coughs> the law, sir? A uh, nodding acquaintance, no more. Mm. Be good enough to follow me, I may have a position to offer you. <laughs> Here, scorch your throat, my friend. <laughs> you are a jolly fellow, sir. A bat could see that with the sun shining. <laughs> then are you going to work for me, or aren't you? <laughs> well, to tell you the truth, sir, I find ordinary work a touch, uh, <laughs> undignified. <laughs> we are of the same mind, my dear Swiveller. Ordinary work is for fools. <laughs> There's more profit in a sharp eye and a keen pair of ears. <laughs> my, um, my solicitors, Samson and Sally Brass, are looking for a law clerk. <laughs> Although they're not aware of it yet. Meet me there at noon tomorrow and I'll see that you get the job. <laughs> Agreed? Agreed. <laughs> You're an uncommon fellow, sir. I will say that. Uh, no, why? Look, why? Because I need eyes in the back of my head, that's why. My lawyers are no better than most, and worse than some. Here, yeah. pay for the rum and keep the rest for yourself. A small advance to tide you over. Right? Uh, how, how can I repay you, sir? How can you repay me by being as sharp as a ferret and as cunning as a weasel? <laughs> Your humble servant, sir. <laughs> sharp as a weasel. <laughs> <laughs> So hot. It's the tongue that's hot, Mrs. Quilp, not the rum. <laughs> Come and sit down here, my precious. Sit. Now, mind what I say to you. Nellie Trent will be calling on you tomorrow, bringing some word from her grandfather. I want you to worm your way into her confidence. But I love the child, Quilp. Love I'd hate to deceive her. Do as I say, Mrs. Quilp! <laughs> Find out what old man Trent has been doing with my... Gold! My gold. I'm very sorry to hear that, my dear. In what way has your grandfather changed? Well, it's hard to say, Mrs Quilp. We used to be so happy until... How that door creaks. It often does. Until what, my dear? I tell you, Mrs. Quilp, it is something you must never breathe again. Not to anyone. Every night and all night long he's away from home. But where does he go? What does he do? I don't know, Mom. 
Do not ask. All I know is that when he comes home in the mornings, he's pale and sad. No, I shall never learn to write as well as you. Don't be silly, Kit. I'm going to try again. <laughs> See? See how easy it is when you try. Grandfather? Hmm? No. No, I cannot go out tonight. Or ever again. Oh, Nell, dear, dearest Nell, surely the day will come when I shall be rich. It has come to other men who do nothing but waste and riot. When will it come to me? Will you keep quiet? I beg your pardon? If you're going to work here, you must learn to write more quietly. Now, now, young fellow, that's enough of that. You'll have to forgive my sister, Mr. Swiveller. She's a bit of an uncertain chap. Or given. Friend of Mr. Quilp's old trout. He's here to help us. We don't need help. I doubt if he's worth his hire. Oh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Sally. As Daniel Quilp's solicitor, it's not our place to question our most important client. Aye. <laughs> and your only client, if the truth were known. <laughs> I have one or two words to speak to you on points of business. Uh, Sally, some tea for Mr. Quilp. I've had enough of that old fool, Trent. I've been as patient as a man can be for months and months. Oh, you've always been too tender-hearted, Mr. Quilp. You down there, let's have some tea! I've decided to smoke the old fox out of his lair. I have here a bill of sale for the old curiosity shop. You understand? But you surely wouldn't evict them. <laughs> <laughs> like a shot, if it suited my purpose. Like a shot. Like he said. The old man, Nell, out on the streets. Sentiment and business don't mix. Here. Then while you work, copy out this eviction notice in that elegant, noisy hand of yours. Yeah, where would we be without the law, my dear Mr. Quill? <laughs> the law takes care of them what takes care of the law. And nobody knows that better than the lawyer. The only person to come out of a lawsuit with a new suit, you might say. <laughs> Therefore, my dear Dick, a word of advice to a young man contemplating a career. <laughs> the only problem with the life of a sailor is that celebrated wife in every port. Unless our Jolly Jack can juggle things romantic, why, sir, his life becomes a wife in every court. But if you're called to the bar, young man, you'll travel far. There's never been a lawyer yet who lost. No matter what his client sins, the attorney always wins. Nothing certain in the law except the cost. The noble practice of the man we call doctor is a life that one may live without disgrace. If you don't mind your patients waking you each morning, bawling, Doctor, there's a pimple on my face. But the law, ah, the law, it was born to free the poor. But the free part doesn't mean it won't cost money. So practice at the bar until you're perfect. Sunny! A lawyer's what you send when a felon needs a friend. 
Tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, I hope you God. Why not? I'll try anything once. Aren't you ashamed of being seen in this courtroom so often? No, Mum. It's good enough for you, it's good enough for me. I shall have to give you either 10 days or 20 pounds. It's all the same to you, Your Honour. I'll take the 20 pounds. <gasps> good reply. Have you anything to um, offer the court before His Honour passes sentence? No, Mum. The lawyer took my last penny. Send a lawyer, send a lawyer. You'll find your pocket short if you take things into court. Now you may loaf away your life as a baker, and the only dough you'll raise won't raise a mouse. And can a farmer leave for work just like his neighbour? Oh, no, sir. He wakes up with it all around the house. But when a man takes silk, cash flows like mother's milk, and fortune beats a pathway to his door. Some men inherit wealth, others earn it with their health, while others simply go into the law. Give up your happiness to be a great composer, and your widow will accept the loud applause. Or should you take the cloth and live in heaven? Why, sir, shout louder than your congregation snores. But the law, praise, praise the law. law, it's an ever-open door. But be sure you're rich enough to tip the doorman. So practice at the bar until you're perfect. Young, Young man, a lawyer's what you said. When a father needs a friend. Have you got any money? Uh, no, but I do have a nanny goat, a rooster, and a fine fat pig. Oh, we should raise some money on those fine creatures. Now, what was it you were accused of stealing? Uh, a nanny goat, a rooster, and a fine fat pig. <laughs> send the lawyer, send the lawyer. You'd better sell the cow when the lawyer comes around. Such excitement every night in the theatre As you trot in at this motley round the hall But that excitement quickly falls when you discover Why, sir, more people on the stage than in the stalls But let a man practice law, his prosperity is sure For he'll rob the rich and poor with equal grace And while lying in his tooth, he will sometimes tell the truth It's amazing what he'll do to win a case Take my advice, avoid the life of a painter. It's a waste of time and worse, a waste of paint. While as a jeweler, you may think you know your onions, but uh, if you don't know your carrots, what's the point? But the law is the law. It's a ticket to the door of that golden inner temple where the rich are. So, so practice at the bar until you're perfect, perfect Richard. Richard. A fortune's what you'll earn once you're licensed to a turn. Your fees will make men quail as they stagger off to jail. You'll defend the swindler's suit if he gives you half the loot. You will master every trick. You'll be known as Tricky Dick. Richard Swindler's who will send when a ballad needs a friend. Come on. True. Well, say it isn't true. Ah, but it is true. It's all perfectly legal. My dear Nelly, has your grandfather deceived you as well? Has he not told you I hold his note on everything he possesses? Upon the stock and property, <laughs> even the clothes you wear. But I'm a reasonable man, Nelly. Have you not always known me to be reasonable? Very reasonable. I would not hurt anyone, not even a fly. Not even a fly. Quilp, I implore you to help me, for Nell's sake, not my own. What I've done has been for her. <laughs> are you stuck, staring mad? What do you take me for? Grandfather, please tell him what he wants to know. <laughs> I can't. I can't. All that gold and you can't? I'll have you thrown into a madhouse, neighbour. You'll end your days where you belong, chained in a padded cell. <laughs> Grandfather. <laughs> 
just another device to gain my sympathy, no doubt. Touch of the vertigo, I'd say. Mm, you do look sickly, though, don't you? Or mad. He's ill. Help me get him upstairs to his bed. Please. With pleasure, my dear. Samson, help the child. If it's a disease, I can't afford to catch it. I'm a reasonable man, Nelly. Remember, if you're left an orphan, there's always a place for you at my house. He's a generous man, is Mr. Quilp. He always did have a soft spot in his heart for orphans. What did you expect to find looking through keyholes, hmm? People, sir. Company. Do get lonely down the cellar sometimes. Why do you stay there, then? I can't be choosy, sir. Ah. Ah. Well, who can? Now, you take me, for example. Gentlemen without a sou can't always choose their lot, and this is not the spot I choose to be. A monster for a boss. And what is worse, two legal eagles flapping over me. My dear Miss, uh, Miss... What is your name, by the way? Nothing, bless you. Nothing? You can't possibly be called nothing. I mean, what does your mistress call you when she calls you, so to speak? Little devil, sir. Ah. Well, I shall call you... Duchess. Oh, Mr. Deliverer, you are a one eh? <laughs> My dear young Duchess, you can count on no man. That's staggerer number one. And staggerer number two has just arrived. My auntie writes to tell me she's dropped me from her will. Built by fate and family. I'm a pauper. I'm a beggar. You're alive. Uh. Take a little crust of bread and a little chunk of Pour on the milk of human kindness, if you please. Then serve it up the children who are only three feet high. That would be my recipe for happiness pie. Bread and cheese that reach the sky. That would be my recipe. Your recipe sounds good to me. I've Confidence in what you do. I'll get my confidence from you. And keep your chin up when you stroll. Except when you stroll near a hole. Grab all your troubles by the horn. Especially when they're on your corns. Tucky is scared, old scary cat. Keep that cat underneath your hat. And, and shape, shape up to that cat up in the sky. Oh, happy. Snell? Kit! Shh! Poor little fella. Don't look himself at all, does he? I thought the air might perk him up. Hell, the shop isn't ours anymore. Well, he hardly sings. It's as though he shares our troubles. Hey, would you like me to take him for you? Oh, Kit, would you please? I'd do anything for you, Miss Nell. You know that. Now, you mustn't lose heart, Miss Nell. The master will be on his feet sooner than you think. I hope so, Kit. Oh, I do hope so. Oh, dear, Kit. You've always been such a good friend. I'll never forget you.
How much longer must we go and smoke it, Mr. Quilp? Isn't it fragrant, Brass? <laughs> smoke is the way to ward off fever. We'll keep it up as long as the old man lies up there sick. Until he's dead, of course. Smoke up, you dog, or you should swallow that pipe. I hope the old man dies soon. Oh, my dear Nelly, how is the old gentleman? Have our prayers been answered? Grandfather is no better. Oh, my dear, you must not grieve. <laughs> Come and sit on Quilp's knee for comfort and tell him where the old man has hidden his gold. You would search the house from cellar to garret, Mr Quilp. Mm -hmm. If your gold were here, you'd have found it. I have come to collect a few of my things. Careful now, young fellow. Everything in this house now belongs to my client, oh. Daniel Quilp, Esquire. <laughs> come now, Mr. Sampson. I have no quarrel with Nellie. Take your pick, my cherub. What a remarkably pleasant way he has with children. Upon my word, it's a treat to hear. <laughs> what a nice little room. Do you never sleep here anymore? I never will while you are in this house, Mr. Quilp. Quilp will never let us go, little Nell. You'll have me shut up in a stone room, dark, cold, chained to the wall. They'll never let me see you again. Listen to me, Grandfather. No one is ever going to part us. That I promise you. Can you ever forgive me, Nell? Forgive you for what, Grandfather? All, all that I brought on you. All this unhappiness. Grandfather, don't you see? Somewhere out there, there's a new world waiting for us. I know a place somewhere, somewhere. If you come there, you see it too.
which way? No, I didn't do it, Your Honor. Oh, Quilp. The key. The door key. The key side and nothing of it. You're a nice lawyer, aren't you? You idiot! The key's in the door. Key in the door. The bell's been muffled. <laughs> Upstairs, both of you. Quick! Did you see anybody go out? No, Quilp. Here's your breakfast. The birds have flown! Bag and baggage. He trusts nobody's word. Suspicion is his virtue. <laughs> behind bars for this. Aiding and abetting <laughs> makes you an accomplice. Mm -hmm. Where's the old man and the little girl? Well, I don't know. And even if I did, I wouldn't tell you. <laughs> Kit, my boy! No offence meant, and none taken, I'm sure. I just wanted to do them a little kindness. And I can't unless I know where they are now, can I? <laughs> no, never to return. You and I are free of it now, Nell. They'll never lure us back. There'll come a time, someday, someday, I'll make someone a heaven on earth But when I come to make my plans Somehow they crumble in my hands Somehow we'll find a home some way, some way Till that someday we'll see it through Stay by my side, my little one You understand we must go on Somehow the world has let you down To be the war of this old clown I'd give my breath to see you smile to hear your laugh just for a while someday there is a love we'll share somewhere there's a somewhere We'll share someday And when that dream we dream about comes true I know a place somewhere My somewhere is somewhere where there's
Why are you doing your repairs here, sir? It wouldn't do for them to see present company undergoing repairs. Destroy the delusion and uh, take away the interest, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, this Judy's clothes is all falling to pieces again. Please, sir, I have a needle in my basket. And thread, too. Would you let me mend the dress for you? I don't see why not, do you, Mr Codlin? No, I don't, Mr Harris. Hands off! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My wife, Judy, has taken my baby away. Will you tell me if you see her? Just tell me. Where? Where is she? Can't see her. She's over here. I can't find her. Where, where did you see her? Which side? There you are. Give me my baby back. No, I won't. You won't do that to me. I'm I not... say, I've been thinking about that old man and the girl. Take that. Yeah, me too. I wonder what they're doing, wandering about the countryside. Give me back my baby! Do you suppose there's a reward out for them? Hey? you come along there with us? Unless, of course, you prefer to be on your own? No. No. <laughs> Nell. Nell, do you miss London? I miss no one there. Do you know this fellow Quilp? I sir. I know him. To my sorrow. And to the good folks that used to live here. But you knew Edward Trent? I worked for him, sir. And for Miss Nellie's granddaughter. Care of brass. What's that? I uh, Samson Brass, sir. Him and his sister does Quilp's legal work. How interesting. And where do you work now? Well, I don't work anywhere now, sir. I'm looking for a job. And you have one, with me. Best bib and tucket, dressed like a knob in your top hat and bumper shoe. All airs and graces, off to the races. You're ready for the sport of kings. Con man or faker, butcher or baker. All leave the town for the dance on a sunny day. All got to winner, God help the sinner who's bitten by the sport of kings. You ought to see the tan bob stands Crown with all the wealthy tops Suddenly the flag goes down And the crowd will drown you in the laughter of... <laughs> 
all around the courses. I play the horses in my employ. There's an indolent stable boy, couple of bubble. Get him to nobble every other horse but mine. When I play the sport of kings, I'm the king of crime. I get my tips from the lips of the underworld. Scratch Dabba Dobbin. Man says he's coughing. Caught it at the sport of kings. Ah, oh, honest Billy. What can you give me? What lucky nag shall I back in the four o'clock? Quill bits an honour. Back Paddy Connor. He's going to win the sport of kings. You want to hear the bigger bass drum? Booming up a blooming storm. Suddenly the brass breaks wind. And they all join in tiddly up pop pop Posh chapper hopper, cloth cap or topper All cut a dash in the flash haberdashery Church bells are ringing, the whole world is singing Lordy all the joy it brings We can play the spot of kings You want to see 
the ten pop stands Crowned with all the wealthy tops Suddenly the flag goes down And the crowd will drown you in the love they are. No galloping here, mine's going broke here Ever on earth is the top to an Englishman Joe, Jack, or Billy, old Grand and Billy Rock to where the fun begins Lady Luck is party, shall I win your money And give you back a pocket full of dreams Will you do that? Eh? Well, the rabbit. Two. Twenty for two. Go three. What's the rent? Uh, uh, the rent? Ah, ah, uh, uh, the rent. Um, Pound a week. Agreed. Where is it? Boot cleanings are extra, and uh, fires in winter are eightpence uh, a day. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, it would, um, it would have to be uh, two weeks, sir. There's ten pounds. Your name, sir, if you should receive letters. I don't get letters. And let no one disturb me until I ring. Uh, over there. George, who never was a good talker. No matter what faults my late husband had, at least he could converse on any subject. Mr. Jarley was a educated man. Yeah, especially when he was on the booze. Hello there. Who won the Elter Skelter, child? The what, ma'am? The Elter Skelter Prize at the races. It was on the second day. I'm sorry, ma'am, I don't know. Don't know? But you were there, weren't you? Didn't I see you in company with a, a vulgar Punch and Judy? Do you know Mr. Codlin and Mr. Harris, ma'am? Do I look as though I'd know common riffraff like that? I apologize for the intrusion, madam. We'll be on our way. Uh, one moment, please. You look tired. Why not stop for a nice cup of tea and a slice of ham? This is indeed kind of you, madam. George, bring some stools. Now, eat and drink as much as you can, and don't spare anything. <laughs> That's all I ask of you. George? Sure. Did you hear the way he talked? That's a true gent, if ever I saw one. Yeah. Jarley's Waxworks. The one and only stupendous collection of waxworks in the world. That's me. I'm Mrs. Jarley. Do not miss the thrill of seeing 100 figures, the full size of life. 
Mm. How wonderful that you can read. Oh, and write, too, I've no doubt. Yes, Mum. What a thing that is. I can't, you know. <laughs> I never saw a waxwork before, Mum. Is it funnier than the Punch and Judy? Funnier? It's not funny at all, child. There's no tarpaulin and sawdust at Jolly's, I love you know. Jolly's unrivaled waxworks have amazed the crowned heads of Europe. Why, madam, you're world famous. <laughs> um, if you've a mind to it, sir, the two of you could travel with us. You yourself could help George, and the young lady here could assist me in pointing out the wonders of the waxworks. A roof over your heads, and plenty of food in your stomachs. And I'd pay you a bit extra for your trouble. Why, madam, it would be a pleasure. Likewise, I assure you. There's a reward out for those two, and you had to let them get away. I let them get away. You know, Nell used to say, Codlin's my friend, she said. Codlin's my friend, not Harris. Poor pretty creature. Do you know the whereabouts of these two people I'm looking for, or don't you? Um, well, sir, um, it, it all depends. Uh, there was talk of uh, the young lady and her grandfather taking up with the uh, travelling waxwork. Show me where you last heard of them. Traipsing up and down the stairs, and you two can't even find out what business they're up to. But there's a great deal of wickedness in this world, Mr. Quill. Oh, you. Kit Nobbles again. I think our lodger has something to do with old Trent's secrets. Trent? <laughs> Trent? Travelling with this Jarley's waxworks, they shouldn't be too difficult to find. The last report I've had, they're somewhere in this area here. I shall want you to come with me, Kit. Whatever happens, Quilp must not know their whereabouts.
I tell you, this Kit Nubbles is one of your honest people. He's a prowling, prying hound. He's a double-faced, sneaking spy! <laughs> Frightfully eloquent, Mr Quilp. Uh, quite appalling. Come to the point. What do you expect us to do about it? Well, you're my lawyers, ain't you? What do I pay you for? I want this dog of a boy put out of my way. Do you want to say it? Yes. How? How? I don't care how. Just do it! I say, Sammy, he is a yelping, insolent dog to all besides, and most of all to me. In short, I owe him a grant. Kit Nubbles thwarts me at this minute and stands between me and an end which might prove a golden one to us all. Kit! Is that you, young fellow? How do you do? How do you do, sir? You're not to go, if you please, Kit. You're to step in here, if you please. Well, is there anything wrong, sir? Wrong? No, I never felt better in my life. No, I, I just want to ask you a little favour, if you don't mind. Christopher. Good day, sir. Yeah, fine week for the ducks last week and a fine week for the dust this week, eh? <laughs> Stop! Thief! 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 Not so fast, boy. A thief? That is not possible. Arrest this boy. He's a thief. Search him. What am I to search for? What's the charge? A five-pound note with an ink mark on the corner was out of my desk and he took it. That's a lie. I've never seen your five-pound note. Well, go on, search me. I've got nothing to hide. I could hardly believe it. I asked the boy to mind the office for me while I ran upstairs. Do, do, do be careful what you say, old boy. It's a terribly serious matter. You'll be sorry for this, Mr Brass. Nothing there, madam. Most satisfactory. Mr Swiveller. In the hat! But I never took that fiver. Master Swiver, tell him. Tell him Kit Nubbles never stole a penny in his whole life. Come along, boy. What? Well, don't anyone believe me? Sad necessity. Right then, on your feet, boy. You've got a visitor. Sir. I want to ask you just one question, Kit, and I shall expect you to answer truthfully. Did you or did you not steal that five-pound note? No, sir. I'd swear my life on it. Then I shall delay my journey until you are free to accompany me. How long will you be gone, then? It's none of your business. Just be here when I get back, that's all. I might, and I might not. You talk to me like that and I'll scratch you with a rusting nail. You... What shall I tell Mrs. Quilp if she inquires? Tell her... Tell her you heard someone falling into the river last night and you think it might be Quilp. No such luck. <laughs> and tell her to consider hers everything she finds upon the body. <laughs> <laughs> Enough, my dear lady. It's a perfect fit. Oh, it do look good on you, Mr. Trent. You have the same handsome shape as my dear late husband. Ah, yeah. He dropped down dead in it, you know. 
It was the booze. Oh, hush, George. You're only jealous because you know it takes a true gent to wear a coat like that. Grandfather? Yes? Isn't this beautiful? I wonder if it's a famous place. Yes, indeed it is. That's St. Edmund's Sanctuary at Little Cranach. When I was a lad, pilgrims used to flock there from all over the country. Oh, oh he's such a gent, your grandfather. <laughs> You've no idea how it's cheered me up since the two of you joined us. You've been very kind to us, Mum. It's, uh, it's very difficult for me to show how grateful I am. You've almost become one of my own. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, I'd, uh, I'd like you to take this. Oh, Mum, the wages are more than generous. We have all we need. And I want you to take tomorrow off. I want you and your grandfather to, to stroll in the country. Forget all your cares. Take a picnic lunch. Your bluffing, sir, does not intimidate me. I think, gentlemen, you're in for something of a surprise. There. Your luck seems to be in, sir. And yours, sir, is not. No, there's still plenty of time. I'm not finished yet. <laughs> Do you hear that, Isaac? <laughs> Reminds me of old Luke Withers. He never took a dice box or card in his hand either. But when he did, plucked, pigeoned, and cleaned out completely. Nell, my dear. Bring me your purse. No, Grandmother, no. Is this all the money we have? Every penny. Rather a light purse. Enough to amuse a gentleman for half an hour or so. Please, let's go, Grandfather. We stayed too long. Nell, my dear, you mustn't interfere. It's for your good. I told you we'd be rich one day. Well, this is just the start. Gentlemen, I'm ready. My game again, sir. Grandfather, you can't go on playing without money. Who needs money when you've got a handsome coat like that? Luck must turn on my side now. When you lose your martyrs. Now, don't be too hard on him, Jowl. He's only an amateur. You know, just one more game, gentlemen. I beg you, just one more. Not without money, old I, man. I have no more money. Well, borrow from her who'll give you that coat, then. Huh? Little bit of night work. Find out where she keeps her tin box. That's right. Borrow it, then when you're able, put it back again. Lose today, win tomorrow. Ah, uh, the pleasures of winning.
heart. Poor child had a nightmare. She, she asked to stay with me the night. <laughs> But why, child? Mrs. Jarvis, our friend. She's grown to love us. Yes, Grandfather. That's why we must go before it's too late. Cold. No, I'm not sure. Matter of fact, I feel worse. Much worse. <laughs> That's what you get for wickedness. You shouldn't have had Kit put away like that. It's your own fault. Kit deserved to go to prison. It'll teach the rascal not to steal. Kit didn't steal nothing. It was all Mr Quilp's doing. Quilp. He put him up to it. I heard him through the keyhole. Duchess, be pleased to draw dearer. It was just a prank, sir, that's all it was. Acting on a client's instructions, you might say. We both have the honour of being in the same profession, Mr Garland. You know what I mean. You little scoundrel, I've half a mind. Oh, please, sir. No violence, I beg you. I always faint at the sight of blood, especially my own. Your sister was a party to this plot. Where is she now? Sally's not to blame, sir. Find Quilp. He's your man. Quilp, who never once has treated me other than as a dog. Punish him, gentlemen. Grind him down. Tread him underfoot. For he has done as much by me for many and many a day. What are you doing here? Our misfortune has brought us here. We have no money for lodgings. We are going to rest here tonight. <coughs> she shouldn't be sleeping on the cold stone. Can't you see the child is ill? What am I to do? You'll soon get warm, miss. My friend, the fire will soon take care of that. No. <sighs> Dear child, why did you take us away from our friends? said it. I knew they was well-bred. I recognize class when I sees it. Yeah, you're not going to do them any harm, are you? Madam, you see in me someone to whom life itself is not more important than the two poor creatures we are looking for. And we shall find them, never fear. Oh. If you should, please give this to Nell for me. 
She did seem to like it, sir. St. Edmund Sanctuary. Place of retreat. Perhaps our journey's end. Please, Mrs. Jolly, why'd they leave here so sudden? Well, we reckon it had something to do with these two rogues, you rogues. see. Rogues? Well, after Nell and the old man left, they came snooping round here, looking for him. Come here. Leave go of me. I ain't done nothing. Oh, no, folks, now, no. leave go, Percy. Well, Who the devil's this? Oh, it's Isaac. Isaac List. Knave by nature and gamester by trade. I found him lurking round your caravan, Mrs. Jarley. Why, that's the coat I gave Mr. Trent. Well, uh, what of that? Gave him good money for it, didn't I? What business would Edward Trent have with the likes of you? Trent? He's no better than the likes of me. Good deal worse, some might say. He owes me money. You're despicable, sir. Enough to turn anyone atheist. What money? But a gamble with, of course. Yes. Your Mr. Trent is nothing but a gambler, sir. A common, shallow gambler. A, a gambler? <laughs> to the gaming tables? That's where he went night after night? That was his precious scheme to make a fortune. <laughs> Lost forever. Gambled away. What kind of an unfair world is it, anyway? Of all the thieving, lying, cheating scoundrels that the world has ever known, that man Trent has simply got to take the biscuit. To borrow people's money on the pretense of investing it and take the whole lot, every jot, and risk it on the turning of a card? I mean, why play cards if you're going to lose? My God, hasn't he heard of cheating? If only he told me he could have borrowed my marked deck of cards with the signs on the back. <clears throat> An ace up the sleeve is worth two in the pack. My God! My God! What shouldn't happen to a dog just happened to me. What have I done to have the whole world simply crumble at my feet? I treated the world as a friend. And how does it end? They take what I lend and flee. It shouldn't happen to a dog, but it happened to me. Whatever happened to the man whose word you could trust? Deader than dust. It never pays to let your heart dictate the ways of your purse. I'll nurse this revenge till I die. An eye for an eye has always been nature's rule. Show me a man that you can trust and I'll show you a fool. My yellow boys, tell me, boys, do. Who stole the gold from my rainbow? Gone with the silver from my sky of grey. I was too kind, love made me blind. Why didn't somebody say so? I wouldn't treat a chimpanzee like they treated me. Why should it happen to the man they call Mr. Nice? My God, what a price to pay for giving people everything I had. A sadder and wiser me now. No flies on me now, but somehow you must agree. I 
they could have done it first to them, but they did it to me. Why do they have to pick on me? Why not one of my friends? Well, you can bet that's what you get for being generous of heart. A part of me died with my gold. I'm cold now inside the old me I'll hide away. People who treat me like a dog better learn how to pry. Every dog has his die. You can cut Quilp's hair many times, Frank, but you can only scalp him once. Thing is to register the disappearance and a good description of the body. Body? To prove that he's dead. Anyway, it'll be a comfort, the body. A dreary comfort. <laughs> now then, respecting his legs. Crooked. Very crooked. Very crooked. <laughs> if I could poison that old lady's rum and water, I should die a happy man. Oh. Question of his nose. Hooked or flat? Flat. Decidedly flat. Flat? Aquiline, you hag! <sighs> <laughs> Do you see this? Does that look flat, eh? <laughs> Thought I was dead, did you, Mrs. Jenny Wynn? Disappointed, dear. Very. But I live in hopes. <laughs> Good night, Mrs. Jenny Wynn. <laughs> They're after you, Quilp. Huh? It has all come out. Samson has broke confidence and is in jail. In jail, is he? Well, good riddance to him. I hope he rots there to the end of his days. And that goes for you, too. I am warning you, Quilp. Don't lose time. I am not to be found anywhere. And if I was you, I shouldn't be either. <laughs> How could you go away so long without a word? How could you be so cruel, Quill? Cruel? Because I was in the humour, madam. I will be cruel when I like. Quilt the Lord, they've been here looking for you. Well, they're not going to find me. 
Now get outside and keep a sharp look out until I call for you. Oh, there's a terrible chill outside tonight. Couldn't I watch from inside? <laughs> out or I'll stick a fork in your eye! I'm glad you're wet and I'm glad you're cold. In fact, it does my heart good to see your nose looking so pinched and frosty. Oh, Quilp, do forgive me. Did she think I was dead? Did she think she was going to have all my money and marry somebody she liked? Did she? <laughs> it's not true. Oh, brass, brass. If only I had you here now. <laughs> you know what I do, Jim? I drown him. Oh, that's too easy a death after what he did to me. Too short, too quick. Do you know that drowning men come to the surface three times? Hmm? Oh, to see Samson's face that three times. I'd spit in his eye as he bobbed up each time. <laughs> what a treat. That white-livered man of the law.
My name is Henry Trent. We've been told my brother Edward and his granddaughter Nella here. Mr. Trent. It's me. Kit Nubbles. Um. It's Nell. Nell. We've come to take you home, Miss Nell. Edward? It's your brother. We're no longer apart. You and Nell shall have everything you ever wanted. D did you hear that, Nell? Didn't I tell you good fortune would come to us soon? She'll get well again. <laughs> You'll see. Let her sleep, Master. She's got a long journey ahead of her. Yes. Long journey. she looked except she reminded me of spring and everything reborn with spring brings back her love I can't recall her every word unless of course I try then they come one by one and then, of course, I cry. I've forgotten how we met. And yet, did I live one hour before? I'm sure my life began the day she said hello. I know I held her hand in mine, though time has blurred her touch. But when night robs my sight, I feel her much too much. Every tomorrow sunrise borrows her glow. Roses return my gaze, yearning to see her face. When will I lose her memory? Time so unkind. I have to lose her spell 
Across my heart, the only thing I can't forget is how we met, and every day that slipped away, and every time she took a breath and clung to life, though scared to death, and taught our hearts a lesson to recall. Memories. 